let's take a look at the history and development of administrative law. The United States began to develop a substantial administrative component in the 1870s and 1880s. In time, administrative agencies engaged in so much policy formation and implementation that the term administrative state was adopted to convey their certainty to modern government. Against the background of industrialization, urbanization, and population growth, governments became increasingly involved in the economy and society and came to rely more heavily on administrative agencies to do much of their work. The Congress and state legislatures were unable to keep up with the continual need for new legislation, often involving complex health, scientific, or technological issues. The courts, which once engaged in a good deal of regulation of economic practices under common law doctrines, were overwhelmed by the changes industrialization caused in production, employment, transportation, and marketing. Vesting rulemaking and adjudicatory functions in administrative agencies was the nation's response to the ever-expanding scope and complexity of governing. More government activity also meant more enforcement by the executive branch. A key feature of the administrative state is that agencies perform legislative, judicial, and executive functions. In other words, the constitutional separation of powers, which largely places these functions in different branches, collapses in administrative agencies. Administrators make rules, adjudicate alleged violation of law and rules, and execute and implement public policy. After the massive federal administrative growth during the New Deal, from about 1933 to 1938, and U.S. involvement in World War II from 1941 to 1945, it was fair to say that the agencies had become an actual fourth branch of the government. By 1946, Congress viewed the power and independence of administrative agencies as a threat to its own role in government and to the overall constitutional scheme. In response, it enacted the APA, which still frames federal administrative law. Several basic premises underline the APA and state administrative law. One is that when agencies engage in legislative functions, they should be informed by legislative values. When they adjudicate, they should follow judicial procedure, and enforcement should be fair, relatively non-intrusive, and subject to review. Importantly, Congress was willing to sacrifice some administrative cost effectiveness to promote these values. In terms of rulemaking, day by day, Congress takes into account the interests and desires of the people in framing legislation, and there's no reason why administrative agencies should not do so when they exercise legislative functions which the Congress has delegated to them. Prior to the APA, administrative rulings might be made in the forms of letters, and nothing in the way of even an informal hearing was required. If the citizen had a hearing, it was at the grace of the administrator or the bureau chief. From this perspective, the act could be seen as a bill of rights for the hundreds of thousands of Americans whose affairs were controlled or regulated in one way or another by agencies of the federal government. Its provisions for administrative adjudication modeled judicious prudence and constitutional procedural due process. The APA did not provide for a legislative or executive review, but it adopted a strong presumption of judicial review of enforcement of other actions. Any person suffering legal wrong because of an agency action or adversely affected or aggravated or aggrieved by agency action within the meaning of a relevant statute is entitled to judicial review. The Act also contained a number of transparency provisions, including the general expectation that agencies would publish information about their organization, rules, adjudicatory decisions, and methods of operation, as well as make their public records available to persons properly and directly concerned. 
the APA continues to serve as a platform for requiring federal administrative processes to embrace the basic democratic constitutional values of openness for accountability, representativeness, and public participation, reviewability, procedural due process, rationality, and limited intrusiveness. Over the years, the APA has been amended and augmented by several additional statutes. There are parallel administrative law provisions in the states, though a good deal have variation. North Dakota and California adopted Administrative Procedure Acts in the 1940s prior to the federal APA. Many more states followed suit between the mid-1950s and 1980. At least half of the state's act are based on the 1961 Model State Administrative Procedures Act. Some include provisions incorporated into the Model State Administrative Procedures Act of 1981, which placed more emphasis on protecting individual rights against administrative abuse. The state APA typically apply to state agencies, but not to local governments.